Did you know that people around the world celebrated the winter solstice long before Christmas? Hello and welcome to World History Encyclopedia. My name is Kelly and for our final video of 2022, we're going to keep it festive. So stick around to learn all about the history of many different winter solstice traditions and important sites associated with the solstice from around the world. Don't forget the easiest way to support us is by giving this video a thumbs up, subscribing to our channel and hitting that bell icon for notifications so you don't miss out on any new uploads. World History Encyclopedia is a non-profit organization and you can find us on Patreon, a brilliant site where you can support our work and receive exclusive benefits in return. Your support helps us create videos twice a week, so make sure to check it out via the pop-up in the top corner of the screen or via the Patreon link down below. The winter solstice falling in December in the Northern Hemisphere and June in the Southern Hemisphere is the shortest day and the longest night of the year. The winter solstice, also referred to as midwinter, is associated with the idea of rebirth of both the sun and the new year. And after the shortest day, the days get a bit longer and a bit brighter. The movement of the sun and the skies in general have been monitored by humanity for a long, long time all around the world, especially since tracking the sun and the seasons was imperative for crop growth and agriculture. The solstice usually falls on the 21st or 22nd of December, and around this time, many different cultures throughout history celebrated midwinter and the rebirth of the sun. We also have many surviving architectural wonders from around the globe that seem to have been constructed with the winter solstice in mind. We're not entirely sure for just how long humans have recognized the winter solstice as a turning point, but we know it was important for heralding in the new sun or new sun god for the next year. The concept of rebirth inspired the festive practice of role reversal, best seen in the festivities of Saturnalia in Rome, where the role of slave and master would reverse, and earlier in Mesopotamian civilizations. The solstice observances celebrated around the globe and through history all centered around similar themes, including light conquering darkness, renewal, new life and rebirth, when after the shortest day and longest night of the year, the darkness would give way to the light of longer days and shorter nights. 5,000 years ago, the concept of the 12 days of Christmas was already celebrated in ancient Egypt. At Karnak on the winter solstice, the temple to the sun god was lit up as the sun rose between two of its pillars. The ancient Egyptians celebrated the god Horus during the winter solstice as a deity with associations with the sun, moon and sky, and their festival lasted for 12 days, which reflected the 12 divisions of their sun calendar. The ancient Egyptians were keen astronomers. They observed the skies and often built monuments aligned with the sun or the stars, including the pyramids. In ancient Mesopotamia, another 12-day festival was celebrated known as the Zagmuk, or the beginning of the year. This festival reenacted the story of the battle between Marduk, representing Orta, and Tiamat, representing chaos, as told in the Babylonian creation myth, the Enuma Elish. In the end, Marduk defeated Tiamat and established order, which humans then helped to maintain, in part through religious festivals such as Zagmuk. Later in Rome, you see the festival of Saturnalia, which honoured the agricultural god Saturn. Saturnalia activities included eating, drinking, games, partying and merrymaking. The people's everyday lives came to a halt with businesses closing, everyone given a holiday and informal colourful clothing being worn instead of the usual formal toga. The cult statue of Saturn had his ankles tied by woolen bonds throughout the year, but these were loosened during the Saturnalia. This act of loosening the ties of Saturn caused the deity to become associated with liberation, which was a prominent aspect of the Saturnalia. The social conventions and tight social structure of ancient Rome were not only relaxed, but partially reversed during this time of revelry. 
Although the slaves still had to make the feasts, they got to eat with their masters and be served by them. Candles were a popular gift since Saturnalia was associated with the winter solstice and was a festival of light associated with the birth of the sun god Sol Invictus on the 23rd of December. Another culture who practiced the reversal of roles during the winter solstice was the Babylonians during their renewal festival, which was adopted later by the Persians. Like in ancient Rome, the slaves and the masters switched roles, and as the year came to an end, the usual rules of living were relaxed. The concept of the 12-day winter solstice festival seen in Egypt and Mesopotamia was also celebrated by the Germanic and Scandinavian people in the holiday known as Yule. Large animals would often be slaughtered during this time, as they would have been difficult to keep fed and healthy during the winter months and the meat was shared amongst neighbors. The word Yuletide, now used as a synonym for Christmas, comes from the Norse pagan winter festival of Yule with the word tide, meaning a period of time. Yuletide has been celebrated for centuries and many modern Christmas traditions can be traced back to the Yuletide celebrations of Northern Europe. Some of these include decorating trees, Christmas wreaths, mistletoe, exchanging gifts, and perhaps even the figure of Santa Claus. Traditions celebrating light, renewal, and salvation, now associated by many with Christmas, were already observed long before the Christian era. During the Neolithic period in Germany, a number of circular ditches were built at a site now known as the Gossack Circle, which used to be surrounded by logs with gates and was built to measure the sun's movements. Much like at Stonehenge, on the winter and summer solstice, the rising and setting sun perfectly lined up with the gates of the monument. In Britain, you can find what is easily the most famous structure from the Neolithic period associated with the winter and summer solstices, Stonehenge. Before the stones were erected, it was used as a place for cremation burials, but in phase two of the construction, circa 2500 BCE, the sarsens and blue stones were placed with great precision to line up with the sun's movements on midwinter and midsummer. The stones that would have framed the sun's movements during the solstices were the most carefully worked, and the entire site was carefully thought out in relation to the solstices. So it is generally agreed that Stonehenge was a temple or structure aligned with the sun's movements, but we don't actually know what kind of rituals took place during the winter solstice at the site. In Ireland, one finds another and more ancient site associated with the winter solstice, Newgrange, a monument that predates Stonehenge, dated to around 3200 BCE. It may have been used as a tomb and has a long single passage leading towards the center, which the morning sun shines directly into at the winter solstice. This phenomenon only lasts for around 20 minutes as the midwinter sun moves through the sky, suggesting the impressive level of mathematical precision in planning and building that went into celebrating the winter solstice almost 5,000 years ago. Have you ever participated in any ancient winter solstice celebrations like at Newgrange? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on our new videos every Tuesday and Friday. This video was brought to you by World History Encyclopedia. For more great articles and interactive content, head to our website via the link below. If you like my shirt, you can find this design and a bunch more at apricusclothing.ca or you can find a link for it down below. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you next year with more videos.